Automation, Wikipedia article audio. IEEE Robotics and Automation Award. Industrial Robot, Autonomous Research Robot, Domestic Robot. Open Loop and Closed Loop Control. Control Actions. Home Automation, Banking Automation, Laboratory Automation, Integrated Library System, Database Administration and Automation, Broadcast Automation, Console Automation, Building Automation. Automated Attendant, Automated Guided Vehicle, Automated Highway System, Automated Pool Cleaner, Automated Teller Machine, Automatic Painting, Pop Music Automation, Robotic Lawn Mower, Telephone Switchboard, Vending Machine. Automation can be defined as the technology by which a process or procedure is performed without human assistance. In other words, automation, or automatic control, is the use of various control systems for operating equipment such as machinery, processes in factories, boilers and heat treating ovens, switching on telephone networks, steering and stabilization of ships, aircraft and other applications and vehicles with minimal or reduced human intervention. Some processes have been completely automated. Automation has been achieved by various means including mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, electronic devices and computers, usually in combination. Complicated systems, such as modern factories, airplanes and ships typically use all these combined techniques. The benefit of automation include labor savings, savings in electricity costs, savings in material costs, and improvements to quality, accuracy, and precision. Discrete Control The term automation, inspired by the earlier word automatic, was not widely used before 1947, when Ford established an automation department. It was during this time that industry was rapidly adopting feedback controllers, which were introduced in the 1930s. Fundamentally, there are two types of control loop, open loop control, and closed loop control. PID Controller In open loop control, the control action from the controller is independent of the process output. A good example of this is a central heating boiler controlled only by a timer so that heat is applied for a constant time, regardless of the temperature of the building. In closed-loop control, the control action from the controller is dependent on the process output. In the case of the boiler analogy this would include a thermostat to monitor the building temperature, and thereby feed back a signal to ensure the controller maintains the building at the temperature set on the thermostat. A closed-loop controller therefore has a feedback loop which ensures the controller exerts a control action to give a process output the same as the reference input or set point. For this reason, closed-loop controllers are also called feedback controllers. The definition of a closed-loop control system according to the British Standard Institution is a control system possessing monitoring feedback the deviation signal formed as a result of this feedback being used to control the action of a final control element in such a way as to tend to reduce the deviation to zero. Sequential Control and Logical Sequence or System State Control Likewise, a feedback control system is a system which tends to maintain a prescribed relationship of one system variable to another by comparing functions of these variables and using the difference as a means of control. The advanced type of automation that revolutionized manufacturing, aircraft, communications, and other industries, is feedback control, 
which is usually continuous and involves taking measurements using a sensor and making calculated adjustments to keep the measured variable within a set range. The theoretical basis of closed-loop automation is control theory. Computer Control The control action is the form of the controller output action. History One of the simplest types of control is on-off control. An example is the thermostat used on household appliances which either opens or closes an electrical contact. Sequence Control, in which a programmed sequence of discrete operations is performed often based on system logic that involves system states. An elevator control system is an example of sequence control. Significant Applications A proportional integral derivative controller is a control loop feedback mechanism widely used in industrial control systems. A PID controller continuously calculates an error value, e, t as the difference between a desired setpoint and a measured process variable and applies a correction based on proportional, integral, and derivative terms, respectively which give their name to the controller type. The theoretical understanding and application dates from the 1920s, and they are implemented in nearly all analog control systems, originally in mechanical controllers, and then using discrete electronics and laterally in industrial process computers. Sequential control may be either to a fixed sequence or to a logical one that will perform different actions depending on various system states. An example of an adjustable but otherwise fixed sequence is a timer on a lawn sprinkler. States refer to the various conditions that can occur in a use or sequence scenario of the system. An example is an elevator, which uses logic based on the system state to perform certain actions in response to its state and operator input. For example, if the operator presses the floor end button, the system will respond depending on whether the elevator is stopped or moving, going up or down or if the door is open or closed, and other conditions. Advantages and Disadvantages An early development of sequential control was relay logic, by which electrical relays engage electrical contacts which either start or interrupt power to a device. Relays were first used in telegraph networks before being developed for controlling other devices, such as when starting and stopping industrial-sized electric motors or opening and closing solenoid valves. Using relays for control purposes allowed event-driven control, where actions could be triggered out of sequence, in response to external events. These were more flexible in their response than the rigid single-sequence chem timers. More complicated examples involved maintaining safe sequences for devices such as swing bridge controls, where a lock bolt needed to be disengaged before the bridge could be moved, and the lock bolt could not be released until the safety gates had already been closed. Societal Impact The total number of relays, chem timers, and drum sequencers can number into the hundreds or even thousands in some factories. Early programming techniques and languages were needed to make such systems manageable, one of the first being ladder logic, where diagrams of the interconnected relays resembled the rungs of a ladder. Special computers called programmable logic controllers were later designed to replace these collections of hardware with a single, more easily reprogrammed unit. Increased throughput or productivity, improved quality or increased predictability of quality, improved robustness, of processes or product, increased consistency of output, reduced direct human labor costs and expenses, Installation in operations reduces cycle time, can complete tasks where a high degree of accuracy is required, 
replaces human operators in tasks that involve hard physical or monotonous work, replaces humans in tasks done in dangerous environments, performs tasks that are beyond human capabilities of size, weight, speed, endurance, etc., reduces operation time and work handling time significantly, frees up workers to take on other roles, provides higher level jobs in the development, deployment, maintenance and running of the automated processes. In a typical hardwired motor start and stop circuit a motor is started by pushing a start or run button that activates a pair of electrical relays. The lock-in relay locks in contacts that keep the control circuit energized when the push button is released. Another relay energizes a switch that powers the device that throws the motor starter switch in the main power circuit. Large motors use high voltage and experience high inrush current, making speed important in making and breaking contact. This can be dangerous for personnel and property with manual switches. The lock-in contacts in the start circuit and the main power contacts for the motor are held engaged by their respective electromagnets until a stop or off button is pressed, which de-energizes the lock-in relay. Commonly interlocks are added to a control circuit. Suppose that the motor in the example is powering machinery that has a critical need for lubrication. In this case an interlock could be added to ensure that the oil pump is running before the motor starts. Timers, limit switches, and electric eyes are other common elements in control circuits. Possible security threats slash vulnerability due to increased relative susceptibility for committing errors unpredictable or excessive development costs, high initial cost, displaces workers due to job replacement, leads to further environmental damage and could compound climate change. Solenoid valves are widely used on compressed air or hydraulic fluid for powering actuators on mechanical components. While motors are used to supply continuous rotary motion, Actuators are typically a better choice for intermittently creating a limited range of movement for a mechanical component, such as moving various mechanical arms, opening or closing valves, raising heavy press rolls, applying pressure to presses. Lights out manufacturing. Health and environment. Convertibility and turnaround time. Automation tools Computers can perform both sequential control and feedback control, and typically a single computer will do both in an industrial application. Programmable logic controllers are a type of special purpose microprocessor that replaced many hardware components such as timers and drum sequencers used in relay logic type systems. General purpose process control computers have increasingly replaced stand-alone controllers, with a single computer able to perform the operations of hundreds of controllers. Process control computers can process data from a network of PLCs, instruments, and controllers in order to implement typical control of many individual variables or, in some cases, to implement complex control algorithms using multiple inputs and mathematical manipulations. They can also analyze data and create real-time graphical displays for operators and run reports for operators, engineers, and management. Reliability of equipment, long-term mechanic capabilities, planned preventative maintenance, commitment from the staff. Control of an automated teller machine is an example of an interactive process in which a computer will perform a logic-derived response to a user selection based on information retrieved from a networked database. The ATM process has similarities with other online transaction processes. The different logical responses are called scenarios. Such processes are typically designed with the aid of use cases and flowcharts, 
which guide the writing of the software code. The earliest feedback control mechanism was the water clock invented by Greek engineer Tizabias. In the modern era, the thermostat invented in 1620 by the Dutch scientist Cornelius Drebbel. Another control mechanism was used to tent the sails of windmills. It was patented by Edmund Lee in 1745. Also in 1745, Jacques de Vaucanson invented the first automated loom. In 1771 Richard Arkwright invented the first fully automated spinning mill driven by water power, known at the time as the water frame. An automatic flour mill was developed by Oliver Evans in 1785, making it the first completely automated industrial process. An artificial neural network, DCS Distributed Control System, HMI Human Machine Interface, SCADA Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, PLC Programmable Logic Controller, Instrumentation, Motion Control, Robotics. The Centrifugal Governor, which was invented by Christian Huygens in the 17th century, was used to adjust the gap between millstones. Another centrifugal governor was used by a Mr. Bunce of England in 1784 as part of a model steam crane. The centrifugal governor was adopted by James Watt for use on a steam engine in 1788 after Watt's partner Bolton saw one at a flour mill Bolton and Watt were building. The governor could not actually hold a set speed, the engine would assume a new constant speed in response to load changes. The governor was able to handle smaller variations such as those caused by fluctuating heat load to the boiler. Also, there was a tendency for oscillation whenever there was a speed change. As a consequence, engines equipped with this governor were not suitable for operations requiring constant speed, such as cotton spinning. Several improvements to the governor plus improvements to valve cut-off timing on the steam engine, made the engine suitable for most industrial uses before the end of the 19th century. Advances in the steam engine stayed well ahead of science, both thermodynamics and control theory. Limitations to Automation the governor received relatively little scientific attention until James Clerk Maxwell published a paper that established the beginning of a theoretical basis for understanding control theory. Development of the electronic amplifier during the 1920s, which was important for long-distance telephony, required a higher signal-to-noise ratio, which was solved by negative feedback noise cancellation. This and other telephony applications contributed to control theory. In the 1940s and 1950s, German mathematician Ermgard Flugelotz developed the theory of discontinuous automatic controls, which found military applications during the Second World War to fire control systems and aircraft navigation systems. Relay logic was introduced with factory electrification which underwent rapid adaption from 1900 though the 1920s. Central electric power stations were also undergoing rapid growth and operation of new high-pressure boilers, steam turbines and electrical substations created a large demand for instruments and controls. Central control rooms became common in the 1920s, but as late as the early 1930s, most process control was on-off. Operators typically monitored charts drawn by recorders that plotted data from instruments. To make corrections, operators manually opened or closed valves or turned switches on or off. Control rooms also used color-coded lights to send signals to workers in the plant to manually make certain changes. Controllers 
which were able to make calculated changes in response to deviations from a set point rather than on-off control, began being introduced the 1930s. Controllers allowed manufacturing to continue showing productivity gains to offset the declining influence of factory electrification. Current Limitations Paradox of Automation Cognitive Automation Factory productivity was greatly increased by electrification in the 1920s. U.S. manufacturing productivity growth fell from 5.2% year 1919 to 29 to 2.76% year 1929 to 41. Alexander Field notes that spending on non-medical instruments increased significantly from 1929-33 and remained strong thereafter. In 1959 Texaco's Port Arthur refinery became the first chemical plant to use digital control. Conversion of factories to digital control began to spread rapidly in the 1970s as the price of computer hardware fell. The automatic telephone switchboard was introduced in 1892 along with dial telephones. By 1929, 31.9% of the Bell system was automatic. Automatic telephone switching originally used vacuum tube amplifiers and electromechanical switches, which consumed a large amount of electricity. Call volume eventually grew so fast that it was feared the telephone system would consume all electricity production, prompting Bell Labs to begin research on the transistor. The logic performed by telephone switching relays was the inspiration for the digital computer. The first commercially successful glass bottle blowing machine was an automatic model introduced in 1905. The machine, operated by a two-man crew working 12-hour shifts, could produce 17,280 bottles in 24 hours compared to 2,880 bottles made by a crew of six men and boys working in a shop for a day. The cost of making bottles by machine was 10 to 12 cents per gross compared to $1.80 per gross by the manual glass blowers and helpers. Sectional electric drives were developed using control theory. Sectional electric drives are used on different sections of a machine where a precise differential must be maintained between the sections. In steel rolling, the metal elongates as it passes through pairs of rollers, which must run at successively faster speeds. In paper making the paper sheet shrinks as it passes around steam heated drying arranged in groups, which must run at successively slower speeds. The first application of a sectional electric drive was on a paper machine in 1919. One of the most important developments in the steel industry during the 20th century was continuous wide strip rolling, developed by Armco in 1928. Recent and Emerging Applications Before automation, many chemicals were made in batches. In 1930, with the widespread use of instruments and the emerging use of controllers, the founder of Dow Chemical Co. was advocating continuous production. Self-acting machine tools that displaced hand dexterity so they could be operated by boys and unskilled laborers were developed by James Nass Smith in the 1840s. Machine tools were automated with numerical control using punched paper tape in the 1950s. This soon evolved into computerized numerical control. Today extensive automation is practiced in practically every type of manufacturing and assembly process. Some of the larger processes include electrical power generation, oil refining, chemicals, steel mills, plastics, cement plants, fertilizer plants, pulp and paper mills, automobile and truck assembly, aircraft production, glass manufacturing, 
natural gas separation plants, food and beverage processing, canning and bottling and manufacture of various kinds of parts. Robots are especially useful in hazardous applications like automobile spray painting. Robots are also used to assemble electronic circuit boards. Automotive welding is done with robots and automatic welders are used in applications like pipelines. The main advantages of automation are The main disadvantages of automation are Increased automation can often cause workers to feel anxious about losing their jobs as technology renders their skills or experience unnecessary. Early in the Industrial Revolution, when inventions like the steam engine were making some job categories expendable, workers forcefully resisted these changes. Luddites, for instance, were English textile workers who protested the introduction of weaving machines by destroying them. Similar movements have sprung up periodically ever since. For most of the 19th and 20th centuries, the most influential of these movements were led by organized labor, which advocated for the retraining of workers whose jobs were rendered redundant by machines. Currently, the relative anxiety about automation reflected in opinion polls seems to correlate closely with the strength of organized labor in that region or nation. For example, while a recent study by the Pew Research Center indicated that 72% of Americans are worried about increasing automation in the workplace, 80% of Swedes see automation and artificial intelligence as a good thing, due to the country's still powerful unions and a more robust national safety net. Automation is already contributing significantly to unemployment, particularly in nations where the government does not proactively seek to diminish its impact. In the United States, 47% of all current jobs have the potential to be fully automated by 2033, according to the research of experts Carl Frey and Michael Osborne. Furthermore, wages and educational attainment appear to be strongly negatively correlated with an occupation's risk of being automated. Prospects are particularly bleak for occupations that do not presently require a university degree, such as truck driving. Even in high-tech corridors like Silicon Valley, Concern is spreading about a future in which a sizable percentage of adults have little chance of sustaining gainful employment. As the example of Sweden suggests, however, the transition to a more automated future need not inspire panic, if there is sufficient political will to promote the retraining of workers whose positions are being rendered obsolete. Lights out manufacturing is when a production system is 100% or near to 100% automated. In order to eliminate the need for labor costs altogether. Lights out manufacturing grew in popularity in the US when General Motors in 1982 implemented humans hands off manufacturing in order to replace risk averse bureaucracy with automation and robots. However, the factory never reached full lights-out status. Automated Retail Automated Mining The expansion of lights-out manufacturing has piqued interest in recent times due to the successful and well-known Japanese robotics company FANUC. Another successful autonomous operation factory would be Constellation Brands Beer Factory in Mexico that can bottle or can, package, and send to the market with only six humans supervising the factory. However, the expansion of lights-out manufacturing was impeded by the many requirements that must be checked off in order to have a successful factory that does not require much or any human interference. This checklist is as follows. Automated Video Surveillance Due to these risks of lights-out manufacturing, there is a controversy surrounding the idea of implementing it in large factories. However, 
it has been around for a significant amount of time and there is notable work that has been developed to ensure that automated work is done efficiently and safely. Automated Highway Systems Automated Waste Management Home Automation Laboratory Automation Industrial Automation Advantages and Disadvantages too. Industrial Robotics Programmable Logic Controllers Agent-Assisted Automation Relationship to Unemployment Notes The costs of automation to the environment are different depending on the technology, product, or engine automated. There are automated engines that consume more energy resources from the earth in comparison with previous engines and vice versa. Hazardous operations, such as oil refining, the manufacturing of industrial chemicals, and all forms of metal working, were always early contenders for automation. The automation of vehicles could prove to have a substantial impact on the environment, although the nature of this impact could be beneficial or harmful depending on several factors. Because automated vehicles are much less likely to get into accidents compared to human-driven vehicles, some precautions built into current models would not be required for self-driving versions. Removing these safety features would also significantly reduce the weight of the vehicle thus increasing fuel economy and reducing emissions per mile. Self-driving vehicles are also more precise with regard to acceleration and braking, and this could contribute to reduced emissions. Self-driving cars could also potentially utilize fuel-efficient features such as route mapping that is able to calculate and take the most efficient routes. Despite this potential to reduce emissions, some researchers theorize that an increase of production of self-driving cars could lead to a boom of vehicle ownership and use. This boom could potentially negate any environmental benefits of self-driving cars if a large enough number of people begin driving personal vehicles more frequently. Automation of homes and home appliances is also thought to impact the environment, but the benefits of these features are also questioned. A study of energy consumption of automated homes in Finland showed that smart homes could reduce energy consumption by monitoring levels of consumption in different areas of the home and adjusting consumption to reduce energy leaks. This study, along with others, indicated that the smart home's ability to monitor and adjust consumption levels would reduce unnecessary energy usage. However, New research suggests that smart homes might not be as efficient as non-automated homes. A more recent study has indicated that, while monitoring and adjusting consumption levels does decrease unnecessary energy use, this process requires monitoring systems that also consume a significant amount of energy. This study suggested that the energy required to run these systems is so much so that it negates any benefits of the systems themselves, resulting in little to no ecological benefit. Another major shift in automation is the increased demand for flexibility and convertibility in manufacturing processes. Manufacturers are increasingly demanding the ability to easily switch from manufacturing product A to manufacturing product B without having to completely rebuild the production lines. Flexibility and distributed processes have led to the introduction of automated guided vehicles with natural features navigation. Digital electronics helped too. Former analog-based instrumentation was replaced by digital equivalents which can be more accurate and flexible, and offer greater scope for more sophisticated configuration, parametrization, and operation. This was accompanied by the field e-bus revolution which provided a networked means of communicating between control systems and field-level instrumentation, eliminating hard wiring.
discrete manufacturing plants adopted these technologies fast. The more conservative process industries with their longer plant life cycles have been slower to adopt and analog-based measurement and control still dominates. The growing use of industrial Ethernet on the factory floor is pushing these trends still further, enabling manufacturing plants to be integrated more tightly within the enterprise, via the Internet if necessary. Global competition has also increased demand for reconfigurable manufacturing systems. Engineers can now have numerical control over automated devices. The result has been a rapidly expanding range of applications and human activities. Computer-aided technologies now serve as the basis for mathematical and organizational tools used to create complex systems. Notable examples of CACs include computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. The improved design, analysis, and manufacture of products enabled by CX has been beneficial for industry. Information technology, together with industrial machinery and processes, can assist in the design, implementation, and monitoring of control systems. One example of an industrial control system is a programmable logic controller. PLCs are specialized hardened computers which are frequently used to synchronize the flow of inputs from sensors and events with the flow of outputs to actuators and events. Human-machine interfaces or computer-human interfaces, formerly known as man-machine interfaces, are usually employed to communicate with PLCs and other computers. Service personnel who monitor and control through HMIs can be called by different names. In industrial process and manufacturing environments, they are called operators or something similar. In boiler houses and central utilities departments they are called stationary engineers. Different types of automation tools exist. When it comes to factory automation, Host simulation software is a commonly used testing tool that is used to test the equipment software. HSS is used to test equipment performance with respect to factory automation standards. Many roles for humans in industrial processes presently lie beyond the scope of automation. Human-level pattern recognition, language comprehension, and language production ability are well beyond the capabilities of modern mechanical and computer systems. Tasks requiring subjective assessment or synthesis of complex sensory data, such as sense and sounds, as well as high-level tasks such as strategic planning, currently require human expertise. In many cases, the use of humans is more cost-effective than mechanical approaches even where automation of industrial tasks is possible. Overcoming these obstacles is a theorized path to post-scarcity economics. The paradox of automation says that the more efficient the automated system, the more crucial the human contribution of the operators. Humans are less involved but their involvement becomes more critical. If an automated system has an error, it will multiply that error until it's fixed or shut down. This is where human operators come in. A fatal example of this was Air France Flight 447, where a failure of automation put the pilots into a manual situation they were not prepared for. Cognitive automation is an emerging genus of automation enabled by cognitive computing. Its primary concern is the automation of clerical tasks and workflows that consist of structuring unstructured data. Cognitive automation relies on multiple disciplines, natural language processing, real-time computing, machine learning algorithms, big data analytics and evidence-based learning. According to Deloitte, cognitive automation enables the replication of human tasks and judgment at rapid speeds and considerable scale. 
Such tasks include Food and drink The food retail industry has started to apply automation to the ordering process. McDonald's has introduced touchscreen ordering and payment systems in many of its restaurants, reducing the need for as many cashier employees. The University of Texas at Austin has introduced fully automated cafe retail locations. Some cafes and restaurants have utilized mobile and tablet apps to make the ordering process more efficient by customers ordering and paying on their device. Some restaurants have automated food delivery to customers' tables using a conveyor belt system. The use of robots is sometimes employed to replace waiting staff. Stores Many supermarkets and even smaller stores are rapidly introducing self-checkout systems reducing the need for employing checkout workers. In the United States, the retail industry employs 15.9 million people as of 2017. Globally, an estimated 192 million workers could be affected by automation according to research by Eurasia Group. Online shopping could be considered a form of automated retail as the payment and checkout are through an automated online transaction processing system with the share of online retail accounting jumping from 5.1% in 2011 to 8.3% in 2016. However, two-thirds of books, music, and films are now purchased online. In addition, automation and online shopping could reduce demands for shopping malls and retail property which in America is currently estimated to account for 31% of all commercial property or around 7 billion square feet. Amazon has gained much of the growth in recent years for online shopping, accounting for half of the growth in online retail in 2016. Other forms of automation can also be an integral part of online shopping. For example the deployment of automated warehouse robotics such as that applied by Amazon using Kiva systems. Automated mining involves the removal of human labor from the mining process. The mining industry is currently in the transition towards automation. Currently it can still require a large amount of human capital particularly in the third world where labor costs are low so there is less incentive for increasing efficiency through automation. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency started the research and development of automated visual surveillance and monitoring program, between 1997 and 1999, and airborne video surveillance programs, from 1998 to 2002. Currently, there is a major effort underway in the vision community to develop a fully automated tracking surveillance system. Automated video surveillance monitors people and vehicles in real time within a busy environment. Existing automated surveillance systems are based on the environment they are primarily designed to observe, i.e., indoor, outdoor or airborne the amount of sensors that the automated system can handle and the mobility of sensor, i.e., stationary camera versus mobile camera. The purpose of a surveillance system is to record properties and trajectories of objects in a given area, generate warnings, or notify designated authority in case of occurrence of particular events. As demands for safety and mobility have grown and technological possibilities have multiplied, interest in automation has grown. Seeking to accelerate the development and introduction of fully automated vehicles and highways, the United States Congress authorized more than $650 million over six years for intelligent transport systems and demonstration projects in the 1991 Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act. Congress legislated in ICE-T that the Secretary of Transportation shall develop an automated highway and vehicle prototype from which future fully automated intelligent vehicle highway systems can be developed. 
such development shall include research in human factors to ensure the success of the man-machine relationship. The goal of this program is to have the first fully automated highway roadway or an automated test track in operation by 1997. This system shall accommodate installation of equipment in new and existing motor vehicles. Full automation commonly defined as requiring no control or very limited control by the driver, such automation would be accomplished through a combination of sensor, computer and communications systems in vehicles and along the roadway. Fully automated driving would, in theory, allow closer vehicle spacing and higher speeds, which could enhance traffic capacity in places where additional road building is physically impossible, politically unacceptable, or prohibitively expensive. Automated controls also might enhance road safety by reducing the opportunity for driver error, which causes a large share of motor vehicle crashes. Other potential benefits include improved air quality, increased fuel economy, and spin-off technologies generated during research and development related to automated highway systems. Automated waste collection trucks prevent the need for as many workers as well as easing the level of labor required to provide the service. Home automation designates an emerging practice of increased automation of household appliances and features in residential dwellings particularly through electronic means that allow for things impracticable, overly expensive, or simply not possible in recent past decades. Automation is essential for many scientific and clinical applications. Therefore, automation has been extensively employed in laboratories. From as early as 1980 fully automated laboratories have already been working. However, automation has not become widespread in laboratories due to its high cost. This may change with the ability of integrating low-cost devices with standard laboratory equipment. Auto samplers are common devices used in laboratory automation. Industrial automation deals primarily with the automation of manufacturing, quality control, and material handling processes. General purpose controllers for industrial processes include programmable logic controllers, standalone I.O. modules, and computers. Industrial automation is to replace the decision making of humans and manual command response activities with the use of mechanized equipment and logical programming commands. One trend is increased use of machine vision to provide automatic inspection and robot guidance functions, another is a continuing increase in the use of robots. Industrial automation is simply done at the industrial level. Energy efficiency in industrial processes has become a higher priority. Semiconductor companies like Infineon Technologies are offering 8-bit microcontroller applications for example found in motor controls, general-purpose pumps, fans, and e-bikes to reduce energy consumption and thus increase efficiency. Industrial automation has a number of both beneficial and detrimental implications, many of which are shared with automation as a whole. Perhaps the most cited advantage of automation in industry is that it is associated with faster production and cheaper labor costs. Another benefit could be that it replaces hard, physical, or monotonous work. Additionally, tasks that take place in hazardous environments or that are otherwise beyond human capabilities can be done by machines as machines can operate even under extreme temperatures or in atmospheres that are radioactive or toxic. They can also be maintained with simple quality checks. However, at the time being, not all tasks can be automated, and some tasks are more expensive to automate than others. Initial costs of installing the machinery in factory settings are high and failure to maintain a system could result in the loss of the product itself. 
Moreover, some studies seem to indicate that industrial automation could impose ill effects beyond operational concerns, including worker displacement due to systemic loss of employment and compounded environmental damage. However, these findings are both convoluted and controversial in nature, and could potentially be circumvented. Industrial robotics is a sub-branch in the industrial automation that aids in various manufacturing processes. Such manufacturing processes include, machining, welding, painting, assembling and material handling to name a few. Industrial robots utilizes various mechanical, electrical as well as software systems to allow for high precision, accuracy and speed that far exceeds any human performance. The birth of industrial robot came shortly after World War II as United States saw the need for a quicker way to produce industrial and consumer goods. Servos, digital logic and solid-state electronics allowed engineers to build better and faster systems and over time these systems were improved and revised to the point where a single robot is capable of running 24 hours a day with little or no maintenance. In 1997, there were 700,000 industrial robots in use, the number has risen to 1.8 m in 2017. Industrial automation incorporates programmable logic controllers in the manufacturing process. Programmable logic controllers use a processing system which allows for variation of controls of inputs and outputs using simple programming. PLCs make use of programmable memory, storing instructions and functions like logic, sequencing, timing, counting, etc. Using a logic-based language, a PLC can receive a variety of inputs and return a variety of logical outputs, the input devices being sensors and output devices being motors, valves, etc. PLCs are similar to computers, however, while computers are optimized for calculations, PLCs are optimized for control task and use in industrial environments. They are built so that only basic logic-based programming knowledge is needed and to handle vibrations, high temperatures, humidity, and noise. The greatest advantage PLCs offer is their flexibility. With the same basic controllers, a PLC can operate a range of different control systems. PLCs make it unnecessary to rewire a system to change the control system. This flexibility leads to a cost-effective system for complex and varied control systems. Agent-assisted automation refers to automation used by call center agents to handle customer inquiries. There are two basic types, desktop automation and automated voice solutions. Desktop automation refers to software programming that makes it easier for the call center agent to work across multiple desktop tools. The automation would take the information entered into one tool and populate it across the others so it did not have to be entered more than once, for example. Automated voice solutions allow the agents to remain on the line while disclosures and other important information is provided to customers in the form of pre-recorded audio files. Specialized applications of these automated voice solutions enable the agents to process credit cards without ever seeing or hearing the credit card numbers or CVV codes. The key benefit of agent-assisted automation is compliance and error-proofing. Agents are sometimes not fully trained or they forget or ignore key steps in the process. The use of automation ensures that what is supposed to happen on the call actually does, every time. Research by Carl Benedict Frey and Michael Osborne of the Oxford Martin School argued that employees engaged in tasks following well-defined procedures that can easily be performed by sophisticated algorithms are at risk of displacement, 
and 47 percent of jobs in Indiana the U.S. were at risk. The study, released as a working paper in 2013 and published in 2017, predicted that automation would put low-paid physical occupations most at risk, by surveying a group of colleagues on their opinions. However, According to a study published in McKinsey Quarterly in 2015 the impact of computerization in most cases is not replacement of employees but automation of portions of the tasks they perform. The methodology of the McKinsey study has been heavily criticized for being intransparent and relying on subjective assessments. The methodology of Frey and Osborne has been subjected to criticism as lacking evidence, historical awareness, or credible methodology. The Obama White House has pointed out that every three months about 6% of jobs in the economy are destroyed by shrinking or closing businesses, while a slightly larger percentage of jobs are added. A recent MIT economics study of automation in the United States from 1990 to 2007 found that there may be a negative impact on employment and wages when robots are introduced to an industry. When one robot is added per 1,000 workers, the employment to population ratio decreases between 0.180.34 percentages and wages are reduced by 0.250.5 percentage points. During the time period studied, the U.S. did not have many robots in the economy which restricts the impact of automation. However, Automation is expected to triple or quadruple leading these numbers to become substantially higher. Based on a formula by Jill St. Paul, an economist at Toulouse One University, the demand for unskilled human capital declines at a slower rate than the demand for skilled human capital increases. In the long run and for society as a whole it has led to cheaper products, lower average work hours, and new industries forming. These new industries provide many high-salary skill-based jobs to the economy. By 2030, between 3 and 14 percent of the global workforce will be forced to switch job categories due to automation eliminating jobs in an entire sector. While the number of jobs lost to automation are often offset by jobs gained from technological advances, the same type of job lost is not the same one replaced and that leading to increasing unemployment in the lower middle class. This occurs largely in the U.S. and developed countries where technological advances contribute to higher demand for high-skilled labor but demand for middle-wage labor continues to fall. Economists call this trend income polarization where unskilled labor wages are driven down and skilled labor is driven up and it is predicted to continue in developed economies. Document Redaction, Data Extraction and Document Synthesis Slash Reporting, Contract Management, Natural Language Search, Customer, Employee and Stakeholder Onboarding, Manual Activities and Verifications, follow-up and email communications.